morning and welcome to the Kerfuffle Podcast. Today we're joined by none other than ICG Supremo, Ian White, and runner-up in Worst Hair of the Year competition, Simon Whale. Oh, you bitch! I thought you were having to go at him. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. If Simon was the, if, if, can I ask if Simon was the runner-up? Who was the winner? Jerry Lyon. Ah, uh, uh, yes, I've seen some of that on social media with uh, with his, Jerry with Lyon, the man that well done, Jerry. Stop talking about his hair. Um, I was a bit... No, obsessed. So, Ian, I've got a couple of questions for you. You know the hard hitting ones. Go on then. Let's hear, let's hear them. ICG Group. Yes. Did you, did you just really miss Blankety Blank and wanted? To see one of those <laughs> webinars with all the windows on it, with millions of faces, is that why you started it? Yes, categorically, <laughs> yes. categorically, <laughs> yes. Um, blank, 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 blank was allowed to answer all of these like you're in a US deposition. Uh, yes, no, uh, I will not answer that question. But that's not that's not allowed here. We need more than that. <laughs> but, well. Uh, yes, blankety. It was never the blankety blank was never the same though since Les Dawson. Uh, it was it was much better when yeah. Les Dawson did it. I'm, I'm going to tell you, you have got a touch of the Les Dawson to you. You know that. <laughs> uh, well, you you mean I'm ugly and I gurn a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't say that at all. I think Les Dawson, Les Dawson, honestly, out of all the comedians, was. I mean, he's not underrated because everybody universally will tell you that Les Dawson was very very funny. But he was extremely talented. He could he could play music, write his own music. He he was a genius. I'd take that compliment, Ian. Uh, I'm I'm definitely prepared to take the compliment. I'm a genius. I can't claim to be able to uh, play an instrument, though. Um, well, depends what instrument. Um, I could probably have a bang on the drums, perhaps. But uh, no, we no we didn't model it on blankety blank. It, it was it was a genuine um, initially, I suppose, a little a little club of two or three guys that were trying to you know, push a collaborative message into the market um, to try and create sort of joined up solutions, really. And it, 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 it wasn't ever meant to be what it's become. It's just that the desire for it was bigger than expected. Um, and and was, it, it, was it a lockdown initiative or was it something that was always going to happen? No, we started it. Uh, we started it about a year ago with about five or six members, very quickly grew to about 15. I think we're at 32 now. Um, we, we've had four or five applications for people wanting to join the ICG this week from suppliers to the industry, um, one of which we will be approving. Um, uh, the, others we, the others we probably won't. So, uh, so, so what does it take to approve an ICG application and what do I need to do to get kicked out? <laughs> what it, well, Simon is a member, so, so so the barrier for getting kicked out is very low. You, you can almost do anything and we'll, 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 we'll keep you once you're in. Um, uh, the, 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 what are the barriers? The barriers are, one, we have a non-compete clause currently within our organisation. So, uh, you know, we, we're not looking to have several suppliers in the same space. We're looking to try and pick on the the best in class as best we can. That's our management best in class. Um, we're not we're not really looking for what I would call absolute new starts that are still in a cash burn environment where their product is unproved and untested. Okay. Um, they need they need. <laughs> well, you, you you could burn cash. <laughs> you you could burn cash at a rate greater than I can earn it. That's for sure. So, um, uh, but yes. So we're we're looking for established businesses that are genuinely making a difference to estate agents that have a, that have an approach to collaboration where they'll work with other members to create uh, joined up solutions. Um, and um, you know that that that's taking place now. You know we're seeing various members come together and create collaborative products for small agents big agents and the corporate agents alike um and it's working very very well um i've i've uh, i've seen many of the um of the broadcasts and it's uh, you're delivering a, a fantastic amount of content at one point you were almost delivering as much content as the kerfuffle podcast was on a daily basis and that yeah but to be that, fair that's, Dave, the, that's the bar man yeah we, we don't have don't have any sort of control over quality, do we? So that's why it's so easy <laughs> to get shit out of there. To, 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 be, to be fair, David, I think you were almost certainly the inspiration for our blueprint on marketing. And let's be fair, we do share, or certainly Kerfuffle and the ICG do share the same digital, awesome 
marketing company, which is Starbury TV. Little plug for them there. They are the best in the business, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, we've we've done a reasonably good job of keeping ourselves in the limelight, I think, and and and, and providing. I I hope. When you tune into those things, everybody can come away with one or two little golden nuggets that that can affect their business positively. That's what we want to. That's what we want to do. We want to become the place to go to for genuine, accurate, fair, reasonable advice on on whatever it may be that we need to talk about within the property sector. It's it's a it challenge, was, though, isn't it? it? Um, what was what was it that really? Uh, what was the main driver for creating it in the first place? What did you think the industry was missing? Uh, I, I, re realistically, what I thought the industry was missing is that it was too fragmented in its solutions. So um, obviously at the time, Gary Barker was building the foundations, which was a nice uh, conduit to the, the conversations we were having. Um, you know, but, but in reality, estate agents having 25 different bits of separate kit is A, expensive and B, just not coordinated. So we were looking to try and create a, a – uh, we we're trying to solve two problems, really. One was the sort of – the tech overload that I'm sure the estate agents were getting when they were getting offered, you know, we webinars and uh, people were trying to promote various products to them. What do I have? What do I not have? Um, in my own consultancy space, I was seeing estate agents that were having uh, outgoings on their P and L to various suppliers. And when I investigated, well, what's the return on the investment? And you know, in some cases, they hadn't even turned the tech on, but were paying for it. And that was partly because they took the tech on board and were never were never really shown how to use it. And, you know, in times of plenty, we're perhaps just a little bit too lazy or a little bit too much fat going around to to cut it out. So one, one was to provide an expert place where you could go and trust that the suppliers within that network were the right type to be speaking to. So it's like a seal of approval. They're an ICG member. You know they're making a difference to other businesses. But then to put pressure on the ICG members themselves to work together to create combined solutions like you know yondel you'll you'll now see them working with quite a few of the members where they put their widget for, for live chat on various social media and email platforms which which brings life to those um reaper are collaborating with a lot of our members as, as you know through foundations we've got people like sprift and akaboom working together on a combined product now which is just knockout um and i could go on there there are loads and loads of others so um, you're creating you're facilitating those sort of synergies between the, the different companies that don't necessarily compete but are able to add value to one another and the clients in the long run. Yeah, and in, in very simple terms, David, if, if, if a process that you're trying to deal with in the estate agency world has got a beginning, a middle, and an end, instead of having a supplier that deals with the beginning, a supplier that deals with the middle, and a supplier that deals with the end, can we get three suppliers together or two suppliers together that can deal with all of it in a collaborative way and work together. Te te I mean, they're always going to be separate companies. They're going to bill you separately. There's no, yeah. there's no desire <laughs> to push them together financially um, at, at this stage anyway. But there is definitely a, an advantage to, to the estate agent to know that they've got a product that product A talks to product B, talks to product C, um, rather than having to go into product A, come out of it, go into product B, um, re-key it all in and, you know, all, all the inefficiencies that exist. Um Oh, and we're definitely making a lot of progress with that now, um, with, with the various tech packs that have gone on the website now. There, there, there must be you know, dozens of examples now where different businesses have got together to solve an estate agent's real problem. Um, Great. Long may, long may it continue as far as I'm concerned. So I, I've, I've heard from an unconfirmed source that your nickname is The Spider because you're so well connected. <laughs> uh, the spider. Um, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. It was cool. I've heard. I've, I've heard of a few other things I've been called, but not, so, not the spider. It's better than that. It's better than that. And I prepared for this. Oh, go I on. thought you were going to. So I have actually got his music for when Ian walks in the room at the ICG room. Are you ready for this? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> And we all dog, we all just kind of fall up like that. Okay, well, well let's you're gonna you you you're, you're gonna have to educate me here, Simon, because I well, don't know what that piece that, of music that is was. The, I cannot believe you don't know the theme tune to the Godfather. No, I did not know that was the theme tune to the Godfather. I don't have time to watch TV. I'm busy in my spider's web. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you've watched. You tell me you have watched the Godfather. I have not watched the Godfather. <laughs> I have seen. I, I've We've seen, got I've, end I've, show I've, there because we're gonna we're gonna watch the Godfather together right now. Get some beers in. <laughs> we're doing this. 
I thought Jay the Godfather was Marcelo Bielsa, so I, I must be going wrong somewhere. I mean, some, something must have... <laughs> Definitely. He is fantastic, by the way. But no, genuinely, this weekend, Ian, Godfather 1, Godfather 2, and thank us on Monday. Okay. Gen just genuinely the best films ever. And that's, well, I more importantly, you need to know who you're modelling yourself. <laughs> 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 well, I I, I I will come back to you either with a fit of rage or a thank you for for, for, yeah. for the fact that I'm modelling myself. I'm, and um, I'm sure it's going to be a thank you. Come back with a load of tips. We, weekends weekends are not for watching films; they're for creating memories for life. Surely you can't watch films at weekends. Just one second, I'm going to close the door because my family are busy making memories in that room. Just one second. <laughs> Uh, Ian, you are right, by the way, it's a lovely turn of phrase, uh, but this is, you You will not be disappointed by it, believe me, in terms of that. You actually, I was going to ask one of these nice, soft, fluffy ones, but you, you, you do like to kick back, don't you? Uh, football's obviously where you get into all your angst, uh, all your anger, but you're a, you're a keen fisherman as well, aren't you? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm. Yes, I, I, I do believe in a work-life balance. I do believe in working a million miles an hour until the batteries run out, and then I believe in in playing a, a million miles an hour until the batteries are recharged. So, um, I'd advocate to that anybody that was busy in their in their life. I think it's impossible. There's no point in living and building either financial wealth or whatever it is that you want to build if you don't then enjoy it with your family and um, friends. Um, Ian, you, you love fast cars, don't you? Oh, yeah. I do love fast cars, yes. So I love what fishing. is it, would you say, about men of a certain age that buy a certain kind of car, what is it that they're lacking and trying to compensate for? <laughs> this, this, by the way, I feel, sorry, this I feel like I'm being steered in, here. This, this question was being sent in by a Mrs. White from Bamstead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this, this was sent in by Mrs. White. Well, um... I don't know, really. I don't know whether I'm trying to compensate for anything at all, other other, other than just the desire to still be a little boy. Um, Come on, you know, words, that... man. So far, I've asked you every question, and you've stayed completely in sort of very professional character. I want to <laughs> hear you say, I feel the need for speed. Okay. <laughs> David, I feel the need for speed. That's the sound bite <laughs> we were looking for. I yeah, feel the need for speed. The problem is you can't drive these cars particularly fast. Although I did have to take something down off of Facebook very sharpish last uh, when was I it saw, a few days I ago. Saw that. I saw that. Um, um, I don't know whether I'm going to get myself in trouble here, but but, but the needle was hitting a, a rather ridiculous number at that point, and unfortunately, um, I didn't realise. But it, a, it can obviously be proven by technology. Um, I didn't know that. Huh? Well, I. I, I I've got a deal for you. Um, Go on, my mother-in-law lives in Germany. Yep. It, if you want to drive that car particularly fast, the autobahn has absolutely no speed limit. So, yeah, no, I've been there, been there, been there, done it. Um, so if I gave you a couple of grand to knock off my mother-in-law, you could kill two birds with one stone. A couple of grand to knock your mother-in-law up, did you say? <laughs> I was going to say, if I <laughs> She's she's past knocking up, my friend. She's past knocking up. She needs to be knocked down. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, is she an avid listener to this particular series? Because if she is, you you're she's just being cut out of the will. She's a lovely yeah. she's a lovely lady, and she's got a great sense of humour, even for a she's German. A avid listener, not a avid listener, the avid listener. <laughs> I'm very happy, David, assuming that you're over the age of 25, I'm very happy to lend you the car to do your own trip to Germany for your own uh, Mercy missions. That is the best trip. offer I've had. Gen so, genuine, offer, gen genuine offer, you call me at some point. Um, I will take you up on that. So, look, look, Simon obviously knows you really well. I have um, come across you, I think, the first time ever that, that we were put in touch, I think... Um, there was a point where I think we were thinking of selling our agency and um, I'd spoken to, to Stephen Brown. Yeah. And he said, he said, speak to Ian White, he's the man. And I think we had um, one or two conversations at that point, but we didn't, we didn't end up going ahead. But for people that don't know you and your sort of pedigree, when did you first come into the industry? How did, it, how did you arrive here? What, what's your backstory? The real honest answer is I, I left school early um i didn't i didn't i didn't uh do very well at school academically not actually to be honest with you i'm not not that people might agree with this but it wasn't because of a lack of academic intelligence it was because school bored the living hell out of me and i just didn't i just didn't go to the last year of schooling um 
I, I preferred to be doing other things that were much more exciting. Um, uh, anyway, on the very last day of school, I did the traditional thing of burning the uniform on the on the school driveway, and you know, because that was that was the rebellious thing to do. I walked down the uh, hill in Maidenhead, um, called Shoppenangers Hill in Maidenhead, and I turned left under the bridge to go into the town centre. And there was an estate agency open and it had a uh, vacancy or some sort of apply within. I walked in um, and said, I've just left school looking for a job. And I started on the Monday. Um, and that's it. That, 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 that is it. As a 15 year old, uh, just turning 16, I think I was at the time. I, I literally, uh, I mean, I've done some jobs working on swimming pools, um, uh, doing swimming pool maintenance for, as, as, a, as a, you know, like a weekend summer job type thing. Um, please, please tell me you weren't cleaning Michael Barrymore's swimming pool for him. No, I did, I, I've done lots of famous people. I did Terry Wogan when he was alive. I did uh, Dennis Waterman's. I did uh, Eric, no, Ernie Wise. They all lived in this part of Burnham, stroke Taplow, um, which is a very wealthy part of just, I can just imagine a quick uh, cleaning balls with Ian White and, and all of these. Uh, we've, got to, we've got to get that happening. Peter Lawrence, <laughs> Peter Lawrence, Paul. There we are. Well, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit worried though, Simon, because most of the ones I did are now dead, and I wonder whether I, I wonder whether I had an impact on this. <laughs> Albeit it was 30, 30 Dennis, years ago. Dennis Waterman's still alive, isn't he? No, De De Dennis is, but 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 uh, Eric, Eric. Uh, I did Freddie Starr as well. I think he is he still alive. I think he might still no, be alive. No, Freddie Freddie Starr's gone. Ah, uh, Freddie's gone. Oh dear. Well, uh, Tim Brooke Taylor. I did his. He's gone, obviously, very recently. Um, oh. But anyway, enough about swimming pools. Uh, so I went. I went into the. I went into the estate agency. I uh, started on the Monday. Um, it was, uh, you know, a, 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 a very much a non corporate non-compliant business that I started my trade in. It was all about hard selling and it was very fast and very furious. And I did two or three years there where I absolutely loved it. I I, I genuinely loved it to bits. Um, learned a lot on, on the sales side of things, the closing, the, the sort of hard end of a state agency, if that if that if that's what you want to call it. Um, they sold to a uh, general accident, it was at the time. And I left in a huff because the independence, I don't know, it was just a childish protest of, of them selling it and I, I felt let down by the owners genuinely felt let down by them but anyway I, I was only a small part of a big business at the time um I went to Italia 90 with a view to traveling the world I was going to go all around from all around Europe went went to watch England in, in in the 1990 World Cup and the view was to go on obviously having celebrated England's World Cup win um but when we lost in the semi-final I came home in a huff and, and put the European tour on uh hold and uh did you um did you cry like gaza did i yes i did cry i do cry at football i have to I, say I, when... I remember that i remember that match very very well i was um i was only very young at the time when when, when was that 19 1990 italia 1990 yeah i was 10 10 years I'm a, old. Little, I'm a little bit of a bizarre chap because i'm known to be relatively psychologically hard nosed um but Just there are three... Just there are, there, there, there are three things that do make me cry. One is football, either success or failure. Um, two, bizarrely, and this is going to sound really odd, when when I see images of soldiers coming home from, from war. Okay. I, I can't tell you why. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what the third one is because that, that would be... Uh, do you prefer the ones that are at home then? Or <laughs> it, it's, actually, it's actually watching their children greet them or their wives That's greet them. a brilliant them. question. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't hear the question. I've chosen to ignore it. But the, um, <laughs> the, the it, it's not it's not it's not the soldiers coming home. It's the reaction of their family to them. Yeah, yeah, I, get that. I get that. Do you know what, Ian? Uh, this will surprise you. I actually I never cry at football. I don't think that I really even actually like football at all. But I pretended to cry uh, because uh, uh, there was a couple of women who were putting their arms around people who were crying. So uh, it was. I went into full politician cry mode. To get a bit of action, still didn't work but anyway. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, I often yeah. learned in my career that crying at the right time during a demonstration could really win your business. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, you I, I've, to... I've, I, I've never cried. I've never cried on a video or anything along those lines. Uh, hey, neither will I ever. You need to know this about me and Ian. So, Ian, uh, me and Ian, famously, and we will get to this bit, but. Ian was obviously uh, MD over at Romans, and uh, he Romans at the time famously had had a 
a bespoke system, and they were just looking to to potentially go with repits. And he, um, Ian, Ian is genuinely, and I did genuinely have a list of the top ten terrifying people in, within the industry. Uh, so for many, many years before I obviously understood that he's a little pussycat, as we see now, he, he, he had this visage of obviously being an absolute ball breaker. And I, I thought, I'd just just to let you know where you were, Ian, because this is I found it in my own old, my own no notebook. Uh, at number four was uh, I'll just do the top four. At number four was David Lynch of Aaron Estates. He terrified me more than anyone else uh, down in that neck of the woods. You were only number three, though, so I say you were quite terrified. I know, I know. You're not even – even with Leeds, you're not top of the table here. I'm gutted. I'm gutted. I, that is one of the most biggest regrets in my life. I clearly didn't push hard enough. Really, really off with it, with, with, certainly at number two, Paul Mackay of Sarah Mains for years absolutely terrified me. Um, <laughs> Now that I know he's, he's a camp biker, it's all okay. So I've, I've basically had to work through all of these people. You know, that, we, we, we all want to know who number one is. Come on, who's the number one? Who's the champion? Does anyone guess who number one is? Who, within the industry? Still within the industry or retired? Oh, I think, I think semi-retired, but they still, still definitely got a hand in the business. Well, I know who mine is, but I'm not going to... Well, actually, I don't know. No, I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> Watkins, Watkins would have got that out of you then. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. No, I tell you what, Russell Manning. Russell Manning always. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's yeah. the luckiest fella ever, and like all of these people. But it, there's a man, uh, and coming back, obviously, from your Leeds background, there's a man who lives and breathes Yorkshire in everything he does and say, says and done. And he's had me more times than ever just sort of... Uh, thinking I was going to lose oxygen. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, so you've got a long way to go in the fantasy uh, fantasy estate agency terror league, Ian. I, the, the, that, terror, that, that terror there, though, was that the deal was, the deal was, the deal was big for you and we were being really tight. And you I was the one that was, awesome. and I was the, I was the one that was put into battle to negotiate with you. Yeah. But is it fair, is it a fair comment, guys, to say that, the way that the industry is evolving, we're becoming a bit more touchy feely and less, less like aggressive bell ends. <laughs> Aggr uh, yes. But no, because because let's let's face it, this industry we've we've touched on this before, Simon. This industry is, on the whole, a sausage yeah. fest, yeah. and there's a propensity for that testosterone to sort of you know get very bullish and very sort of macho. But I think we're, we're yes, coming away from that now, aren't we? Uh, as a customer delivery uh, position, I think that's right. Um, I, I still think in the boardroom and around negotiating things, you you know, you've got you've got in that particular instance, you had Repit that wanted Romans as a, as, a, as a keynote client, and you had Romans wanted Repit at the cheapest price possible. I mean, that's never going to be. There's only one way that's going to that is going to be a hardball negotiation uh, that I won, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, so, well, actually, you could argue Simon won because we did become a client of Roman, uh, a client of Repit. H however, I, I was particularly unpleasant in the negotiating position, having agreed something and then deliberately pulled it, knowing that he would go to his boss and tell him he'd got the deal. You, you, so you, you gazundered me at the 11th hour, at, in, in, and I still remember it. Uh, but then, as I said, you know, it's this classic thing, isn't it? Yeah, look, Repit are still, sorry, Romans stroke leaders are still, uh, you know, a happy client or client of them. 130 offices. So it's not like we, anyone can look back on that deal and say it was anything other than great for both parties, was it? Yeah, no, I mean, I don't look back with fondness with the actual negotiation position, but I was sent in to achieve a particular objective. And uh, would you would you employ the such tactics again? No. So, no, so wouldn't. you wouldn't you wouldn't act in such bad faith again? No, and it was in bad faith. I mean, there's no, I told Simon the deal was done and then didn't sign the paperwork and then and knowing that he'd gone and told his board. And do you apologise? It, it was... It, and do you apologise, Simon, publicly now on air? <laughs> well, we've had, we, we, we've had this... No, I'm not going to apologise to him, no. Um, oh, but, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not... No, I don't think... You've not watched right The Godfather. You're not wanting to apologise. <laughs> what kind of human being are you? Go and watch some <laughs> coming on. Oh, oh. Hey, I've just, I've just offered you my fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, 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 I wouldn't. No, no, I would stand to bring soldiers home for you. I'm not doing it, Ian. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't, David. And, I, and let me give you the answer as the reason why. Because I think, I think when you're, when you're 
building something, you, you behave very differently from when you've got to the top of the mountain. I think I think you have to have different behaviour sets to, you know, we Romans was a barrow boy business. Let's be honest about it. It was a great business, but it was built on the absolute sweat of people that just knew how to do things. And, it, you know, sometimes those lines were crossed in order to build an empire. Once the empire was built, trust me, we behaved properly. Um, yeah. You know, so 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 no. But it, but if I was a small little business person now fighting for my place where Romans have become, would I do that? Yeah, you would. Oh, no, okay. it, 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 if I if if I was if my need was you know my vision was to get to a whatever million pound business and number one and all this sort of stuff. What whatever my ambition was, if it was that big, I'd ruthlessly pursue it, and I would mentor anybody to do the same thing. You but you could you you can't get to the top without friends. Yeah. You, you've got to have friends. You've got to, you, you, you know, it's okay to have a couple of enemies. And I'm sure I've got a few of those somewhere. Um, well, in fact, I, if, but in fact I, could, I could probably give you a list. Um, but I have got a lot of friends. I've got a lot of friends as well. In the but you get, in, you get into that stage in life where you've understood that you catch more bees with honey than you do with vinegar, right? Well, and also you get to a point where, 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 where you are the honey and the bees just come to you anyway because you've oh. already. Oh, you, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What do you mean, ooh, baby? Have I sexually aroused you, or did you, did you just yeah, like I that? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think that analogy did it for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, so, so, Ian, who in the industry, other than Simon Whale, and you can't choose me, I know you want to, but who in the industry today would you say is really impressing you? Because the, there are a lot of faces, there's a lot of products, there's a lot of suppliers, the agents are... I mean, we're hearing a lot of very strong independent voices from the agents for the for the first time in a in a long time because they all used to just sort of blend into one, and now you're getting some real personalities stepping forward, particularly with this whole right move stuff. Um, so, who is who's impressing you? Look, o over a long period of time, I th I think probably the most impressive figure in my lifetime in the estate agency space that wasn't part of romans because i'm going to say that the guys there were just head and shoulders above everybody and anything yeah. in my opinion um would be peter knight you know i i i've learned a lot from peter um i think he's a hyper intelligent man he's very detailed um and you know i i i, I listen to what he says um so i i you know i i can't think peter would be the number one um if you are excluding the other board of directors at romans who, who would be one, two, three, four, and five, without a shadow of a doubt. Peter Kavanagh and Dale and Peter Coles. You know, we had a great time, and it, it, it was it was awesome being part of it, to be honest. But um, uh, Peter Knight uh, impresses me. A, a bit of a newcomer, but a guy that I've become very fond of, both on a personal level and and on a business level, is Ben Sellers. I I, I think he has massive of just a, just a genius capability to see things that just can't be seen by by well, certainly not by me. Um, yeah, and his ability to put messaging out that that correlates and connects. Look what he's done with Kerfuffle. I mean, it's probably the biggest brand in the world now. You know, if we did a survey, if we did a survey across in some darkest, deepest corner of wherever, I bet you they they've heard of the pink of Kerfuffle. Um, there, there are there are people on every side of the world that you name it, somebody has got a pink kerfuffle cap somewhere. Well, well, hang on a second. I have requested one on social media. I've, I've text, I've emailed, I've begged. I, I actually haven't well, begged. I'm going to turn that back. You, I didn't you, beg. You, At any point did I not beg? But well, I still don't have neither a t-shirt nor a hat. Ian, I've got a new initiative. Um, I am, I, I think I could probably say I'm, I'm a kerfuffle client ambassador today. Um, yeah. And I've, I've released We've decided that Kerfuffle doesn't want to get left behind with the economic um, shenanigans that are going on today. So we've decided to print our own money. So we've got what we, what we call K dollars. Now, if you go onto the Kerfuffle website and leave a video review, yeah, for any supplier, for every review, you get 10 K dollars. Okay, you can spend that in the Kerfuffle merch shop. We will send you some merch. How about that? There you are. No, I just want to. I, 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 I think this should be unconditional. I deserve a kerfuffle hat. Now, I, I will go on. I will go on and do your. Um, I will go. I will. I will go on. Uh, I'm negotiating. He's an utter bastard. Well, I, I, no, I, 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 I will go on. Just tell Stephen Brown that his mate Ian White refused to leave him a video review. It's simple. It's all right. Well, um, I, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Blackmail. Ian, um, let's let's touch on 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 something that this is. 
this is more of a Chris Watkins question for you. Um, Go on then. Look, I, I I I see you around on the various different f uh, forums and the the streams of uh, conversation online as regards, particularly around this whole boycott right move thing. And you've been obviously very vocal, and I I, I think that a lot of your you've challenged a lot of people to sort of define what it is that they're actually doing. Are they in? Are they out? Do they have a defined position? Are they just on those forums shit stirring what is it that they aim to to achieve and i think that you keep um pushing that a lot of people have said that whilst whilst obviously your opinion is very valid because you've worked in the industry for a while and you have a view of these things um they will also say that perhaps you've been pushing for say one dome to to become a, a solution for them what would you say to them well, I would definitely say that I'm pushing for one dome to become a solution for them because it's uh, I think it's a good solution. Um, I don't get paid for saying that. That's, there, there's, there's no commission element, which I think people think there is between me and one dome. I have and do do some consultancy, which which obviously is, is a commercial arrangement, but it isn't based on uh, a, a commission structure. Um, but I recommend one dome and work with one dome purely because. I believe in what it's doing. It's providing free listings for estate agents. It doesn't sell their data and it provides them with a different type of technology for the way it searches. And I think it's a solution. Um, that has no bearing on my view on Rightmove. It's just, I think you should be at one dome whether you stay on Rightmove or not. Um, and and uh, do you think do you think that these voices that are at the moment seem to be enjoying a bit of um, attention all around, do you think they're ever going to come to anything or is it is it going to fizzle out? The right move campaign. Yeah, um, I think it, I think it will do neither. I think it, I think it's a slow burn. Look, in, in my opinion, the portal, the paid for portals where you pay a subscription and you can't dip in and out. I, I, I think that's a dead model. The question is, is it going to die quickly or is it going to die slowly? I think the portals are yesterday's newspapers. However, I don't think the digital scene has yet got its act together enough to to fill that space. And I don't necessarily on mass, and I don't think the mindset of the estate agents is 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 strong enough in most cases. So, I think Rightmove will see a degradation of members. They have seen a degradation of members. I know that that number will double roughly based on various conversations. It'll roughly double. The losses will double uh, tomorrow. Is it when? When's the first? There, there'll be a number um, Monday, is it? Yeah. There'll be another big drop off on Monday, and I know that there'll be another another big drop off the month uh, the the first of July when the when the period is up. Um, I think the, f the first of June is Simon's birthday, is it not? That, that's the big date. That's the big date we're heading towards. Yeah. And how how old are you going to be this year, Simon? You know what, dude, genuinely, I keep getting it wrong because I think that's I think I'm forty seven. Yes, I am forty seven. <laughs> You're forty seven. Yeah, I know. It's unbelievable. You can look at this Peter Pan exterior. The, ex the exterior is okay. It's the livers I worry about. They must be at least 90. Uh, the livers? Uh, sorry? <laughs> but going back to, going back to right move, do you think, because um, I've been just interested to, to, to your take on it, do you think they're going to learn lessons and change their behavior? Not in terms of pricing structure, because I actually I think, in, to be honest, that's fair game. If you can command that sort of money, go yep. and command it. If people will pay you silly money, take it every day of the week. Yeah, that, yes, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I but, think. But I will think their that, customer service side and customer focus side of things change? I, I don't know. I hope so. Um, I also perhaps think that they would have to think very long and hard over the next two or three years how and if they are to increase prices. Um, rather than it just be a annual affair of whatever number the board has decided to do to keep the shareholders happy, I think I think each of those moments is now going to become a bit of a a bit of a hot point for them where where they may lose further members. Um, I, I, I hope so. I've I've never really been close to right move. Um, you know, I, I certainly was one that campaigned long and hard before right move got going. That it sh that we were we were we were really creating a problem. Um, because I think it's made a state agency vanilla. I think I think it's done three things. It's, it's created a vanilla 
platform where everyone's very similar. Yeah. I think it's made estate agencies lazy where right movers become the best member of staff and therefore the skill and the the relationship building process of being an estate agent has largely been lost. And I think that's where the real that's where the real agents really get it right, where they absolutely plug into their local community and they they become part of it. But if 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 it's put it on right move and sell it, um let's just instruct purple bricks. So um or, or the likes. So I, I I think right move will definitely be smarting, um, but ultimately, I don't think the price is the issue. For me, the price is, you know, if if, if I was sat here, let's just say, for example, in, in my old position in Romans, I would be wanting right move to double their fees. Why? Because selfishly, it would knock out my smaller competition. If I was the smaller, if I was the smaller competition, I'd be wanting right move to reduce their fees so that I could stay in business and 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 and, and be viable. So. There's a complete mismatch in the marketplace between what's right for which business. And, you know, it's, I, I'm not advising anyone to leave Rightmove. I will advise some people to leave Rightmove once I've looked at their business model, and I'd advise some people to stay on it. Um, but those that leave it need to have a plan. They need to have a pitch, a plan, and, and, and an alternative solution to sell to the clients. And, um, and at the moment, there's just there's too much disparity, isn't there, between the different plans. So... There's some people that are saying, right, we're coming off everything all together. We're just going to go cold turkey, use Facebook as our, our medium for selling um, properties and advertising them to the public. But that, to me, feels short, short-sighted short as an agent because as much as social media is great if you leverage it properly, I don't believe it's going to be the go-to place for people to look for properties. You don't wake up in the morning and go, right, I'm, we're moving house today. I'm going to get on Facebook and see what's around. You, you go to a portal, don't you? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, if you're an active buyer or seller, you're likely to be looking on one of the three or four or five portals. Yeah, you're going to be on Zoopla on the market, right? Move, uh, maybe One Dome. Um, there's some new challenger ones coming in that seem to be getting some traffic, which is good. Um, but ultimately, what Right Move or the portals don't do is attract the passive market, which the old newspapers used to do. And social media does do that. If you use social media in the right way, um, you use the right technologies. But to go back to the first analogy, and I'm going to offend some of your listeners here, if you're coming off of right move and you have no plan, there's going to be two, there's going to be two outcomes. One, you ain't going to last. Two, you, you, or you're going to go back on it pretty quickly. Or the reason you're coming off of right move is because your business is not good there's a big difference between coming off because you can't afford it and coming off because it's part of your strategy. Um, and a lot of the noise around the numbers are people that are desperate to come off of right move because of the cost, not because of its effectiveness or because of anything other than they're just not very well run agencies. So, so right move represents such a big part of their expenditure, but it's not the right move is expensive. It's that their turnovers are tiny. The, the, yeah. the, 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 if right move is the best member of if right move is your best member of staff generally speaking and i know i'll offend some people because i have have on some of the forums your business has bigger problems so somebody, bigger problems like, Ian, somebody like christian byfield who again has got a fantastic business uh, really sat and, and looked and measured the leads and everything else. And he took that very much as a, there was two elements. It was a strategic element. But secondly, it was that, you know, he felt he was at that stage where he, could, he he wanted to deal with people he actually liked. And it was the opinion, you know, the way that it was treated back. So he didn't go into this because obviously the business was struggling. It's a, it's a fantastic, fantastic business. That's a very different one you're saying than those businesses, as you said, said we're coming off. They make a big song or dance of it and actually ends up being the biggest advert for right move because they actually go out of business in a month or two, don't they? Probably, unless they've got a very good plan. I mean, look, Christian's looked at it from his perspective. One, he is primarily a lettings business. Let's 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 make that yeah. clear that he, he's primarily lettings. I think I think that would implica- have different implications. But, but, but he is also very much a business that's built his place within his community. He's a well-known figure both in the industry and within his his geographical area. And Rightmove isn't his best member of staff. He has an absolute conviction that he doesn't need Rightmove. Um, Rightmove's treatment of him has pushed him to make the final decision to come off. Um, I'm sure had they been half reasonable with him, he, he would still be a, a, a client. But the, the difference is he truly believes 
and, and has got a plan and is going to execute that plan. Time will tell whether he's right or wrong. However, there are people now looking to execute the right move plan one way or the other, stay on, come off. They have no plan. The reason for executing that the, the decision and, and to try and persuade other people to come off is because they want to feel comfortable in numbers. Guys, just make the decision. Do what's right for you. Forget everyone else. So considering that right move are that this billion, <sighs> multi-billion pound business and that they're a PLC effectively that is that run by shareholders, um, they famously don't engage particularly well with the public in, in it, with their public, and I'm talking about agents. So they're not, they, for instance, if we invited right move on, on this show, or if Chris Watkins invited right move on to justify their position and say something to agents, they're not really up for questioning on that level. They have a very sanitized party line. Well, they, yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they categorically turned me down. I mean, we, we, we asked Zoopla on the market and right move to come to a, conversation which would be controlled you know we're not going to have people throwing throwing rotten tomatoes at them from the stage it was a controlled environment um on the market said that their preference was to deal with their people one-to-one -one. i don't know whether they're de delivering on that promise or not but if they are great um but wouldn't come on um you're an on the market client I, i'm guessing from the way you, you pulled the face there that yeah, they haven't no, been... no, i'll tell you on the market out of all of all of them i, I like my rep and that's just personal to him he's a very personable guy um and he's very down to earth i like him i don't get i don't see anything from on the market that impresses me so i don't feel particularly they that they do engage their customers um i don't think that they're interested in my point of view necessarily and i think during this whole sort of past three months they've been all too silent so that i think what they've done is while super have been sort of launching offers and Right move have put out an offer, retracted an offer, put another one out, and they've battled through it. I think on the market of, of sort of ducked and then let those two absorb most of the fire. And they which, which they, could be a very reasonable strategy to be fair from their point yeah, of view. No, but I, I, I the, the point is right right, right move um, after a little bit of backwards and forwards. They're very polite, they were very, very quick to respond. Don't get me wrong, they they I mean on the market were slow to respond, but eventually did saying thanks, but no thanks, we prefer to go one to one. Um Right move were perfectly polite, um, but said thank you, but it's not it's not how we operate, which is fine. Zupa said yes, happy to come on, um, but realistically, only if one of the other big two did. They didn't want to be Zupa and the challenger portals because that yeah. that would have wouldn't have looked yeah. right. So, so we, we we never got that going. But I, I would have thought that would have been a prime opportunity. Of course, it's a prime opportunity to trip up on air, but it's also a prime opportunity to to to, to succeed now. I, I don't know because I, I, I'm pretty sure if I'd have been on the board of any of those, and the, I, I, I would have taken the opportunity to, I would yeah. have backed myself to be able to deliver a positive view of of, of what not, what are what we're like. Not just that, I think that if you, I think people these days, I think they, I mean, take somebody like Bill Clinton as an example. Um, you know, there, there's an example of a politician that obviously got his got his hands extremely dirty, but in terms of the way that the public perceive him. It wasn't his end. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the way that the public perceive him, it's okay. Once you've had that mere culpa moment and you've said, look, you know what, I screwed up. Let's carry on, guys. I'm, I've still got what to add. And I think that if you got a, a, a human line out of right move where they said, we fucked up. We, we, we think our product is, is good value. We can demonstrate that. Where we fucked up was we were not respecting you as agents properly. We were not, we, we weren't engaging you properly. We weren't listening to you. We're now listening, and let, let's let's wipe the slate clean and, and move forward. I think the I think the gain out of that, Ian, yeah, by I, 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 I couldn't agree with you any more than you know if, if, if they can. Uh, I, I think I think in I think people do forgive um, if 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 people come out, but if 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 Having said that, the forgiveness would be very short lived if then it was just clearly smoke and mirrors to gain some traction. But yes. I think the biggest, I, I think on the market, I've got a much, much bigger chance of gaining traction if they came out and said exactly that. We messed up. We started off with one thing. We slightly pulled the wall over your eyes. One of the big problems they've got is that they, they, their, their COVID 19 deal, if you like, is 
is still putting the original gold members that, that made investments and were paying the four or five hundred pound an office or whatever the, the higher yeah. fee was. They're still paying more than the Johnny Come Latelys. That yeah. can't be fair. That can't be fair. It can't be right. Now they've got to deal with that because on the market could still yet be the champion here. They they could potentially be, but you've got. I don't know what the numbers are, but you've got a section that are absolute religious followers of on the market because they still perceive it as being agent owned. It isn't agent owned. The fact that you've got more shares in agent ownership does not mean it's agent owned. Owned means decision making. I, I, I agree 100 percent. And I think a lot of us in the industry would regard them as utter sellouts for doing what they've done. And I do. I do. I, do. I think I think the promise of what, you know, cheapest, cheapest fees forever, the early adopters, you know, the only every promise I can think of was, I believe, legally and illegally broken. But it, it is what it is. But come out and say that and rebuild. Get some agents on your board. Put some of your bigger shareholders back on the board um, to protect estate agents. Um, you know, agency owned does not mean that you have the majority of the shares. It means you have the majority of the decisions. And the agents have no power in the decision making of on the market whatsoever, as far as I can see. Um, we've got to give the new guy a chance. But at the moment, the new guy, one, he's not been appointed. And the one that's acting, as you say, have really hidden. They, they've not come. They've not done anything to let us know what they're. Has, a, has um, anyone yet broken? The, has anyone? Because uh, I've not read it. Um, maybe I've missed it. Been busy over the past couple of weeks getting back to work. But. Um, has anyone put some shed some light on what's happening? What happened with Ian Springer? Oh, there are some various bits and pieces, but nothing that you'd want to pin your name to without without having good lawyers. Um, <laughs> but I, but I, but I think to be fair, I mean Ian may have gone of his own admission because I think he that may be part of the trying to then build the bridge because I think Ian is so was so associated with the broken promises. Yeah. Um, so it could be actually a business strategy that Ian was on board with. I don't know. I don't know. I've not not been inside but i would love to buy on the market shares personally off them buy the whole bit off them and then and then do it properly um the problem is their valuation of it i suspect won't be accurate but you could create something the i don't think you can create it from scratch and i don't think you can create another mutual i don't think you can copycat another portal but if you if you if you were to get some genuine agent ownership with people running a portal that really cared about agency Yes, they're there to make money because I think you have to accept all businesses are there to make money. Um, but had a genuine understanding of what it's like to be an estate agent on a day to day basis and provide them with the right tech. You know, these portals should be embracing social media as part of their marketing subscription. They should be yeah. doing this for the agents. Yeah. They should be qualifying leads for the agents. They should be, you know, they should be doing more for the agents and, and then charging more isn't a problem. If you solve more problems, they'll pay you more money willingly. But if you hey, solve right. fewer problems, sorry. I was just yeah. going to say, do you see anywhere around the world a portal doing it well from your from that perspective in terms of doing the social media, doing the you know doing the full service rather than just the digital sale of property? No, no, not really. I mean, I think I think I mean the position that Right Move and to a degree that Zoopla and uh, they find themselves in is wholly logical. They started off as a business. They became extremely dominant through that process they acquired shareholders that required a return they are a product of their environment i don't think anybody ever sat out 25 years ago or however long ago it was to say let's build a, a pariah that bleeds the industry dry charges and everything that's not what's happened what's happened is they've evolved naturally as you'd expect but they've also evolved to the point where as you see if you, if you look in history, it's littered with big, big businesses that, that grow, become arrogant, start to lose sight of their customer base and their, their R&D and their innovation, and they get eaten up by something else. WH Smith's got destroyed by Amazon. Uh, Blockbuster's got destroyed by streaming videos. I think it's a really interesting point, Ian, and one thing is, you know, I've said it a few times, the, uh, genuinely, and obviously we all know a few people at the company they, they, they're not, they're, as you said, they're not out there knowingly uh, operating buyers, you know, that they're, they're not being two-faced about it. They genuinely believe that they are delivering, you know, the best product for the consumer and the agent there. So there is a, there's a disconnect in terms of, you know, where, where, where it's gone wrong in terms of there. And I think that's where that full and honest, you know, appraisal, and if they can't do it now, they never will do it. 
of looking at what they do well and what they could do better needs to happen and those conversations do need to start taking place with the groups because I, I understand why they don't want to get involved in collective certainly collective bargain, bargaining but you know frankly i think this is a real this is a real moment for them this is a real any uh, any any any, any any paid to list model where you sign up for a period of time let's say a year two years or whatever it is is totally at odds with its business model to its shareholders and its customer base. That's just it's just it's just a business fact. They they on one hand they have to deliver ever increasing profits to the shareholders, which can only be done by three things: more estate agents. That ain't going to happen. Charge the estate agents more. That's easy. Or create extra products and charge the agents for it, which they which they do quite well. Um, however, what they don't do very well is when the agent wants to come off of those products. You can't. They created an artificial yeah barry it's like a scam almost it almost feels like an upsell scam it's like you know if they, if they provided transparency you go 500 pounds up you do it for three months if you want to come off after three months you go back to the way you were but you can never do that yeah. with right move um well let's and, face and that, it, also the products are um if you, if you took what you put into the right move extra products in terms of getting premium listings or you know those banners that they give you whatever it may be um, that's all that they've got to offer. If you took the same money and put it into a bit of targeted advertising on Facebook, you would get a lot more traction than you will do on on that portal. Yeah, I mean, very. I mean, it's not an advert for the guy, but if yeah. you were to take your total spend across a business, uh, I don't know, five office business, and give it yeah. to Ben at Ben Sellers at Starbury, at, apart from the mindset of your listeners yeah. or the people that work for you, I promise you, he'll turn it into far more cash than Right Move ever will. And he'll build you a unique individual audience that is yours on your data streams that no one else is getting access to, that you can then use that big data to make even more money in the years to come. Simon, um, that, that's, that's a supplier review. Worth <laughs> 50K dollars at least, right? Exactly. You're giving him a couple of K dollars there. Um, Ian, you did say there that you can't, you know, the three options, which were totally right. But I would draw just one of them. Can't get more estate agents, so you know you're not. There's not more. There's nothing. Just because they have said that they won't go in different market doesn't mean that that isn't you know a, a valid option. You know there are millions of other estate agents in other countries, and so you know if they, I mean I firmly believe if they they should be looking at this and say look we've topped out the UK. You oh, cannot I keep the level. In the portal enough, then look to different markets where, yes, it isn't really worth doing things with it on that basis. But uh, yeah, leave it and then I'll, I'll let you know. Um, Emily Fryer, I think. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm losing connection with you a little bit here, mate. I can't, I, I didn't hear it, I didn't hear much of that. Did, 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 uh, can, can you hear me, guys? Yeah, we've got you. Can you hear us, all right? I think your connection's gone up the spout because I can hear David well, but I can't Just hear you, really. Sec. I'm going to remove him. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome Wait, to the Top Apple Podcast. We're taking a right one second. Let's <laughs> put it back on. Hey, he's back. Hello. Right, talk to it, Wayne Lee. We couldn't hear you, but you were every other word. I was just going to say, you, at the start, you said obviously you can't you know, right move it. They, you know, they can't find any more estate agents, but they can if they go to new markets. And it's perfectly tried and tested with other multinational businesses around the world that you take that model to a new country and you you build on it. So that's where I, I would be looking because, and it's not easy, by the way. I accept that, and you are correct. They've gone for the easy option. But they should be saying, we've topped out the UK. We've squeezed the lemon as much as we can do there. Where's our either new product lines in the in the UK or let's go to new market? I, I definitely think new product lines. I think new markets is a difficult one because most markets will now have a dominating portal. Um, and also right moves behavior here would make it very difficult, I believe, to build a right move anywhere else because they'll just come and speak to their cousins in England and they'll say, no, don't do this. You're, you're mad. Or if you do, make it a pay to list individual properties, you know, because that, that that's the sort of portal I would have is that you choose. Here's my portal. Put your property on. Don't put your property on. It's a pound per, you know, 10 pound per listing and you or per week or, or whatever the model is, is make it like the adverts. It's your choice, Mr. Agent. In down times, you, you, you put less on. If you're listing more, you pay me more, but you're making more. Um, that seems intrinsically fair to me as a, as, as a model, um, and it means really? the agent can exercise decisions. Ian, but you know Australia really well, and the only country that makes right move look like a charity uh, is realestate.com. 
you know, which does have that individual listing element. And yet, rather than the few, you know, hundred quid that it costs to list all of your properties, you're looking at, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars to get some listing, uh, you know, to get individual listings on board. So, yeah. you know, they I would be very, very, I think, you know, imagine if realestate.com opened up over here, that same conversation would happen in the, in the way you've just, you've just spoke about. So I think it's, whilst it might be fair, it can be open to abuse even more so, can't it? Well, I, th I think the difference between Australia is, is that, generally speaking, the agents take a fee up front for the marketing fund. So the cost of being on Rightmove is paid for by the by the seller or the landlord. Um, yeah. So if I if I list in Australia, I'm charging him two and a half, three percent, whatever whatever they whatever they charge. Um, but I'm also charging maybe three quarters of a percent to one percent as a loyalty. It's called a marketing fund type thing. So the cost, the individual cost of putting a property on on realestate.com would it is in the thousands of dollars, I believe. Yeah. But the vendor's paying for it. Um, yeah. And of course, uh, in, you're just shifting it that surely, you know, you're shifting it from the agent paying just to the public. Is that any better in, in, in overall? Because certainly even the agents in Australia who aren't ultimately paying this feel that just like in the UK, it's gone too far and they're charging too much. Well, it, it has and because obviously what's happening is, is the client has so much they're prepared to spend on their fees. And if they're giving X thousand of it to the portal, then they're taking that off what they'll pay. the. So the, the agents in Australia are being squeezed on their fees because of the cost or one of the costs is, is putting it on the portal. So let's say a client's prepared to pay 3% to sell their house. They don't give a shit who they give that 3% to. But if, if they're having to give 1% to, right, uh, to let's say, right move, they ain't going to give 3% to the agent because that's now 4%. I, I don't know in its current format whether the UK infrastructure of how most businesses are currently modelled would have the capability to uh, charge a, a fee on success and an upfront marketing fee from the client. I, I, I think okay. the skill set's not in the right place. I, I would definitely advocate doing that, even if you start off with very small pebbles and just charging, you know, even charging for your EPC, some people don't even do that. I think, yeah, um, I think you're right, and I think the mindset and the skill set is not there. And I think that if there's one thing this Right Move campaign has shown is that for a minute, and I'm talking for a micro minute, it was just a very small window of time it did feel like there was unity amongst certainly independent agents for the first time ever. They'd got their shit together and they were communicating. And, and, and that, was, that was a beautiful thing. But it would need the industry to adopt a sort of a new standard and be able to understand that the race to the bottom isn't necessarily where we all want to be. And you're going to have to demonstrate value both to the client so to, in order to raise fees. But also to go to a – see, if, if you go out to pitch to, to an average vendor today, we all know fees are being squeezed. So they've, they've spoken to a competitor agent that is willing to undercut you. For you to say, oh, and by the way, I'm going to want a check from you for 500 quid towards marketing, it, it would be almost impossible to maintain a decent fee and also put your hand out for, for marketing costs without really demonstrating – huge amount of added value and i just don't think we're there as as an industry i think whilst whilst the major if you've got um, a majority of people all singing the same song great but if whilst we are so disparate and there's so th there is absolutely no cohesion i don't think it's going to happen no I, I i don't think either but i do think what you might find is a separation or or you know I think I think one of the things that I would say is is that I see agents who consider themselves to be premium trying to charge what they consider to be a premium fee, but actually they're delivering economy level service, uh, and they've confused themselves as to what actually premium really is. Um, mm. But I so I do believe there's a space for a premium agent that acts similar to the Australian guys, where they they'll go in, they're they're proper local experts, they they they're backed with the best tech, they've got the best team around them. The client might pay them two, two and a half percent or whatever it is they pay them. They might be prepared to pay a little bit up front for marketing. We've seen it with the bigger brands, the John D. Woods, the, the Hamptons, the, um, you know, some of the independent local guys, the fine and countries. You know, some of those guys are charging higher fees because they are seen as premium, et cetera, et yeah. cetera. Now, they're, they're all the thing that's unique about those is they're all upmarket brands. But I believe that 
I believe that there are people living in Middle England properties that will still pay premium if premium was truly offered. But you've got to be honest to yourself as a business model. I mean, when I see clients, it's like, well, if I'm not one of these consultants that says, let's just put your fees up willy nilly. If you want to raise your fees, where are you going to raise your service? You can't. Yeah. The simple law of economics prohibits you from offering very little and charging a lot for any length of time because you get, get found out. Similarly, which is where the UK estate agency has found itself moving towards. You can't deliver a lot and charge very little and be profitable. Yeah. So yeah. we the agency either has to say, right, let's be a low fee, low cost, low touch point service and offer that. And I think there's a space for that. There's a space for a self-service, low cost model. But there's also a service that's a middle one. And there's a service that's the top end one. You know, a lot of these guys that purport, you know, come and join us because we get two and a half percent. Bullshit. They get it once in a blue moon and then want to tell us it's on every listing. It's a lie. It's a complete con. Um, it's not real um, because it's just not real. I can assure you that they're just yeah. making that up. You know, um, I, I don't know. I'm yet to meet an agent that has in very small, very few cases that is willing to walk away from an instruction over a fee. So somebody that's that's got the balls to turn around to a vendor and say, look, I appreciate you want me to do this for X percent, but my fee is 2% and I can't do it for a penny less than that. I'm willing to lose it. At the end of the day, I think they always, it's a bit like you and Simon at Repit when you, when you pulled the deal, you always go at the last minute, you'll always say, right, fine. I'm willing to, you know, I'm willing to match it. I'm willing to do Simon it. Simon did. <laughs> Simon did. But look, the, I mean, that was, that was unpleasant and it shouldn't, it should never be aired again. It was done. It was a long time ago. I'm and I was sorry to keep mentioning it, but <laughs> once um, somebody um, puts it ahead, it's there. It's, it's amazing. Recorded, we're, it? It's amazing. We're such good friends really. But, um, but the, the, my, my point is, if you're going to be a cheap touch point portal based agency, be that. Don't try and be anything else and, and be brilliant at that. If you're going to be premium, be premium, be brilliant at that. Um, to answer your question, though, David, one thing that I speak to all of my clients about is the most powerful negotiation tool of all is to say, no, no, thank you. I don't want your business. Really? I've made more money turning people away than I ever did by saying yes to the low fees, because if you say yes to the low fees all the time, you affect all the people that would have paid you the premium fee because you just end up being a low fee agent. So yes. if I, let's say I'm selling a hundred houses a year. Yeah. That's a pretty good agency. That's that, that would be what a five, half million pound turnover in the Southeast. If I'm selling a hundred houses a year and my fees are one and a half percent and I absolutely am rigid, I'm not charging a penny less. I might lose 10 of those sales and only sell 90, but the 90 are at one and a half percent. If I, want to win the 10 and drop to 1% or 1% and a bit percent to get the whole 100, I'm telling you now 1% of the 100 is a lot less than 1.5% of the 90. Yeah. So yeah. this need and desire that you must win every single instruction you visit, there's a number of things you should be challenging. Do I like the vendor? Can I get on with them? Are they going to be a pain in the ass? Do I want their business? Is the, is the commercial arrangement between me and them worthwhile? And is their price and their motivation sensible enough for my my brand why would you want to deal with people that you're not aligned to how, how painful is it dealing with people who do not see the world through your eyes or you through theirs it's painful for them painful for you um if somebody wants to negotiate every last little piece of your contract and start moving lines out your contract and changing the notice period do you know what let them go and be someone else's pain in the ass um it's, it's you, <laughs> hey? so again I said, thanks for that advice. I'll bear that in mind now. <laughs> no, but, but you know what? That is, that is great. That, from, from an agent, I know, you know, if you speak to an agent and, and you say, well, you know, do you, do you love what you do? And there are some people that say they love closing a the deal. They love doing presentations. They love standing in somebody's living room. Some people are adrenaline junkies. They get off, off on that. But for the most part, a lot of them will complain about their clients or, you know, that they're a pain in the arse, they're too demanding, they're whatever it may be. So I think you're right. I think most people don't get, don't have the enough guts to choose their clients and the people that you can work with because you're right. You get a lot more. They, I, I believe the client gets a lot more and you get a lot more out of the whole deal when you're both aligned in terms of your vision for marketing. And it's very much a partnership between the agent and the vendor. 
Well, I, th- and I think the low fee approach is fine if you have low fee employees on low wages. But if you've got, if you truly want to win a marketplace, you cannot do it with substandard staff. Forget all the tech. Forget forget all the right move, not right move. Ultimately, the business, the amount of money people are earning appears to have dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped. So now what's happening is estate agencies are no longer picking up the people with the right work ethics, the right skill sets, the right attitudes, the right can do, will do, have done, work hard, be prepared to do that extra weekend, that extra evening. Those people have gone into other industries, I'm afraid, because that's where their hustle deserves to earn them the money. And it's business owners have become so tight, they've gone the wrong way around. What they've done is they've dropped wages and wages with dropping income. They should be increasing and increasing, taking more of a risk because an A-grade player wins more often than they lose. Um, a C-grade player loses to the B and the A-grade player. Well, who, who's getting the better deal here? The C-grade guy at Peanuts who yeah. keeps losing but still charges you the peanuts. Um, yeah. So I, th- I think the whole industry, and, and I genuinely believe that the, 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 you know, the challenging period that we've come through is, is going to see some of this wash through. I think a lot of people have woken up to the fact that they've got to reimagine their business. That's a Peter Knight saying, and I think it's absolutely an awesome saying. Reimagine your business. How exciting is that to reimagine your business? How many agents were sat down a year ago, two years ago, reimagining their businesses? They weren't. I, they I've were, spent the past week valuing houses for people that have been locked up together for eight, ten weeks, and they're reimagining their marriages. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Or reimagining their journey to work, or reimagining the fact they can now work from home. I mean, um, so, it's, oh, Jesus, what was that? Um, High pitch squeak. So I, I think we're going to have, I think we are going to have some uh, some shake up in the marketplace. I think you are going to see some agents that will that will uh, change their model. I, I happen to be lucky enough to be working with, you know, more often than not, the ones that are, they have reimagined their businesses on the day that we fully go live and their offices are full of their entire team. Yeah. Their business structure, their service delivery, their systems and processes in the main will be totally unrecognizable from what they were on the, the day we were asked not to go to work. Um, those are the businesses that will inherit the earth. Those are the guys that are going to take the market share. Come what may, right move, no right move, self-employed, not self-employed. It doesn't matter. Th- these guys are the ones that are going to make make the difference. And I think what will happen is, is then naturally people will follow in and follow them because that's what happens. Good businesses get followed. They get copied. Yeah. Yeah. Ian, that we're going to we're going to have to write one up, guys, because we have taken uh, a, a, an enormous amount of time in. I've absolutely loved having the chat with you again and re- reminiscing how you've screwed me over over the years. Um, uh, uh, yes, yeah, look, we, we haven't discussed any of the stuff we were going to, so we're going to obviously need to have you back on and do it. But thank you being for, uh, for for joining us, and it's fascinating as ever to talk to you right in the centre of pretty much everything that's going on. Well, good fun talking to you guys as well. It's nice to have a bit more of a light-hearted one rather than the seriousness that the world is. Um, it's good to have a bit of fun, isn't it? We, we, we try to we we deliver. deliver on our promise. Magic, thank you. Take care. Ian, thank you. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Bye. Yeah.